Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? And so what I'm curious about is, you know, I, I think people hear conversations like this and they're just like, oh, it's so heartbreaking, and so devastating. And it's not that it's not. Let's be very clear about that. But but what started to happen with you from that moment? And where are that's you at in life and relationships and career and, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's actually a good a good point because it was a really pivotal time for me when that happened. So I was um, in a relationship with uh, my girlfriend at the time. Um, we were just about to move, I think, to into Brooklyn. And I hadn't always lived in the county that I grew up in. So that was kind of like a big change. And I had just started my agency about a, maybe not even a year before that. So there was a lot. I was self-employed for the first time in a new-ish relationship and about to change locations. So like a ton, like a swirl of, of change. And now all of a sudden, this kind of decision has either been made for me or maybe I subconsciously set this up because I kind of knew mm -hmm. um, that, that would that would be the case. But, you know, it was it was like someone ripped my heart out of my chest in that particular moment. But I think it got better every minute after that. And I'm not saying it was easy to your point. It, Mother's Day still sucks for me, right? Like it so just does. Um, the first couple of years after that, she tried to send me, like, mail me a birthday card. And I was like, why are you doing this? It's like, it's like ripping the wound open every time. Like, we don't speak, but you're going to try to play mother of the year and like, send me a birthday card. No. So the last time that happened, um, I think she probably sent like three or four years in a row. And I just put like return to sender and she like, she got the message. Um, but you know, in a recent session with my shadow work coach, um, we were talking about this, this idea of what this represented and how much of a, of a gift it kind of was, right? This thing happened for me, not to me. And I, I kind of found this word that I had never thought about before in the context of my mother and similar to your like liberation. I think in retrospect, I feel a lot of relief. I feel a lot of relief that, that she didn't agree to go to that appointment, right? Because that level of toxicity, I would have been, I would have been in it for the last 16 years, 17 years of my life. And like, what a relief, what a gift to not do that and to kind of chart my own course and, you know be a business owner, be in some amazing relationships. I was married for nine years in a relationship for 16 with my ex-wife. I mean, the friends that I've made, um, being part of the LGBTQ community, there are just so many beautiful things that where my life has kind of moved and navigated. And I don't think that I would be as present to those things or be as grateful for those things if I was still in that sort of toxic relationship with her, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense because when you're, when you're in those kind of toxic relationships and entanglements, it's all you think about. Like, it, it's crazy how overshadowing those are. And, and that could be, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, work, employer relationships. I mean, friends, however it is that you would describe a relationship. It's like, that's at the forefront of your mind. It's with you when you go to sleep. It's at the gym. It's when you're eating dinner. It's when you're driving your car. And it gets you the most in your moments of quiet. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the really interesting things about this journey I've come to find is, and, and I don't think any aspect of removing people from your life is easy. I don't think people taking themselves out of your life is easy, but, but I think that there's so much power in it because it gives you more opportunity to sit in and reflect your truth, which is arguably the most uncomfortable thing that we do because you have to get honest with yourself. You have to ask yourself hard questions and, and then you have to put in boundaries. You have to put yourself in this position where you actually fucking follow through on what you say. Right. And, and that's, that's so hard because especially when it comes to other people, you know, this idea of guilt and shame and hurt comes up and we feel like, Oh no, I, I should 
get back in that relationship. I should do that thing. I should bend who I am for that other person. And I've come to find more and more that the less that you do that, the more empowered you become. Do, do you feel like that's hold true for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it sounds like you kind of did a very similar thing six years before I did, right? Um, and I didn't realize until way later in life that that was the ultimate form of self-love and boundary setting that I could have ever done, that you could have ever done. We didn't know it at the time. It was much more like protective, but in retrospect, it's like, wow, that was like some hardcore boundary setting. And I'm really, again, looking back, I'm really proud of, of that, of, of my ability to set that boundary. It's almost like I knew that, that it was like I needed to move forward and have a healthy life. Like that's what I was meant for. And being pulled into this, you know, really tumultuous thing was not for me. You know what I think is really interesting because when I'm coaching people, one of the things that we inevitably, I can count it, I can wind my watch to it, right? There's going to be a conversation about boundaries around our toxic parents. Well, and especially in my world, I work with child abuse survivors. And and I've often thought to myself, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this and, and see what you think. Yeah. But I've often thought to myself, if if I hadn't made that decision at 18 as a kid when I had not yet been influenced by the world in such a way and I, I hadn't had all these thoughts about what it means to be a grown-up, quote-unquote, I wonder if I would have done it. Do you ever think about that? Um, well, I was 24. Yeah, but you were 16 when you left. Yeah, I was 16 when I left. Um would I have done it? I, I would have to say probably yes. Probably yes. Especially if I had done any kind of like, you know, self-development, personal development, you know, spiritual work, like any of that stuff. I would see that as like, if, if, if we're just like fast forwarding this whole situation and pretending that, you know, this was um, just a couple of years ago. Yeah, for sure. I definitely would have done it. And I would have recognized it as something that would be very difficult, but that I would need to do, you know, in order to live a, a healthy life. 